Hey everybody and welcome to another model building workshop. Today we're going to look at the Skoda PA2 Turtle. Now the PA2 Turtle, or the Skoda Panzer Wagon 2, was developed by Skoda and is based on the feedback of their earlier PA1. All right, seems to go without saying, right? So it, it featured rounded armor plate and that was something that was pretty new at the time which production was started in 1923 with 12 units ordered but it was never accepted into official service at that time so the Vienna police force purchased three of them in 1927 and the remaining nine were purchased by the Czech police force in 1930, 1937 yeah and the Germans took over the PA2s when they annexed Czechoslovakia in 1939 and they were used as armored radio vehicles so this is the Tacom Skoda BA2 Turtle. I know it says World War II here. Not exactly true. One was, the German <laughs> version is, the rest of these. Yeah, these are from 32. Yeah, some of this doesn't necessarily jive with each other here. <laughs> but anyway, so this is what it's saying. These are from like 1932 police cars. And these here from the 25. Well, I guess they weren't official, I suppose, is what I was saying. But these are some other ones with a really interesting camouflage scheme you can see there. For the Czech police. And the last version, which I decided to do, is an actual World War II vehicle. And that's the German version here, which is a radio car done in the overall dark gray, Panzer gray. And this one was used during the French campaign by, it looks like the 2nd SS Panzer Division. Although it might have been a motorized division at that point, not actually a full-fledged Panzer Division. So... Let's take a look at this. This is one of the weirder vehicles out there, I thought. A very interesting rounded vehicle. So it's got driver stations in the front and the rear, so there actually is no front and rear. You can see the headlight and there's a covering for blackout. Got the markings for the second SS. It has a lot of large German crosses on it. And it's got the radio aerial on top. Technically, the Germans would have removed the machine guns for their radio cars. Uh, I opted for a little creative license and kind of wanted to keep them in there because it just looks kind of neat with those in there, I think. Kind of fun looking vehicle. Uh, one of the stranger things that I've built. And if you haven't noticed from my YouTube channel here, or the Providence uh, Library, um, Community Libraries of Providence, is that I, I do like some rather oddball items. It's kind of what I live for, right? So, and this is certainly up there. So, odd vehicle. So at the time in 1940, the, uh, the SS was still kind of viewed by the German army as this lesser than units. Uh, they didn't have the respect of the German high command at this point. They were kind of thought of just being armed thugs by the German army. So they had to do with hand-me-down equipment at this point, such as these Czech police cars that they converted to radio vehicles, as you can see here. And... Uh, and other assorted equipment that was kind of second line gear at that point. It wasn't until about midway through the war, well, 41, 42, I guess, we started to see the, uh, the SS begin to gain more notoriety and getting more respect from the, uh, the German army, which always viewed them with suspicion and distrust. Uh, but as things became a little dicier for the Germans during World War II. The SS was strengthened and they were given more equipment and given more of the 
almost considered impossible tasks of like storm that the stormtroopers were, were meant to do like uh, really difficult fanatical attempts of combat and that's where they were given those and then eventually they got by 43 44 they were getting the lion's share of the best equipment the newest stuff the best of everything and the army began to get starved of the good material anyway so this is a tacom kit and it came with this pretty fun booklet here which is the uh, instruction book the parts count of this kit was rather low as you can see Had rubber tires on there rubber pieces so here's your assembly Nice instructions. I think they're pretty good at uh, illustrations here. Not too hard to follow. Pretty basic floorboard there, rubber tires. I did have an issue with this step here because this, um, it's not a turret, but the rounded uh, machine gun cupola or whatever you want to call this. So it had these two side pieces here you put together and then you put those two with the other two and you form it. So there's four pieces that you need to get together and line up, as you can see here, and then you're going to drop it onto the whole body here. Now I had a hard time keeping those pieces together. They kept bending and wanting to wiggle out. It might have been me, I don't know, but I, I had a hard time getting that to stay well. Let's see, and this this is the step here, trying to get that to fit in there and not sp split and leave uh, massive gaps. So I had an issue with that, trying to drop that in. Um, if I did it again, maybe I would try a different method, maybe letting uh, the two pieces of one half dry before putting it, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't work, I don't know. Who knows? But I, I had you know, issues with that. It's pretty straightforward. Drop it in there, and then there's the bit for the radio aerial. Again, it wasn't supposed to have machine guns, but I thought it would be cool with them, so I said yes, I'm putting them on. Uh, yeah, so my challenge was getting all of that lined up, and I think if you look carefully, well, maybe not. Uh, hopefully, I <laughs> did a pretty good job of not having too many gaps there and not too much putty, but I had a hard time getting this thing sitting in here because then you get the doorway on the side here, which you have to try to pop it over that. And this thing, so there's a lot of different shapes because it's a really cool rounded vehicle. But getting all those shapes to line up and, and sit together was a challenge. Guns are movable, and these fun little, well, they don't want to move now. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Tires, they rotate, and they uh, they all turn, because it's one of those, the driver's in both sides, so it could go in either direction, and steer in either direction. So there's no actual front, I guess. So anyway. Fun looking vehicle, really cool, uh, neat subject matter. I thought this was a pretty cool thing. I had to have this, <laughs> just had to. Um, again, just be aware that putting all of this together up top here was a challenge. Maybe maybe you won't have that issue. Um, maybe it'll go smoothly, might have been just me. Who knows, um, but this is a fun thing to have in your collection. And if you really, you know, Adventures with your painting. The Czech ones have some really cool schemes, don't they? With the black outline around them. There's one here that's uh, without the black outline. It's just very geometric shapes. So, some interesting stuff. Interesting vehicle. I don't think there's any other differences with the other ones. Ah, quite the booklet here. Yeah, it just depends how you want it, how big you want the shapes. But they're kind of all the same list of colors. Now 
I guess is World War II, but technically only the German one is actually World War II. So that's today's model building workshop. Oh, let's look at the extra decals. Kind of nice looking. They went on pretty good. And that's today's model building workshop. We'll see you again soon. Okay, happy modeling. Keep on building. See ya.